Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, ordered the allocation of a budget of 5.5 million BD to double the value of Social Security benefits, which includes 17,000 Bahraini families, which will be distributed in mid-April. His Royal Highness also ordered doubling the value of disability pension, which benefits 12,000 persons with disabilities, who are registered in the list of the Labour and Social Development Ministry. The Premier's directives came within the framework of his support for needy families and the individuals with special needs in various occasions, including the holy month of Ramadan. The UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network, in cooperation with the Centre for Sustainable Development at Columbia University and the Court of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, organised an online seminar on the occasion of World Conscience Day in which high-level international figures participated, including the Deputy Secretary-General of the United Nations, Amina Mohammed, Director-General of the WHO, Dr Tedros Ghebreyesus, and Assistant Director-General of UNESCO, Stefania Giannini. The High Representative of the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, Miguel Moratinos, and Sheikh Hussam Benisa Al Khalifa, along with a number of international officials and ambassadors of peace, accredited by the United Nations. The seminar discussed the significance of the initiative of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and his message to the world on the occasion, which contributed to enhancing the role of a conscience as a human value that preserves human dignity and supports the efforts and endeavours of the international community in achieving peace, security and global stability. The participants also discussed the efforts of the Kingdom, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, with the framework of its support and safety and sustainable development affairs. The seminar was run by the President of the Centre for Sustainable Development at Columbia University, Professor Jeffrey Sachs. According to the resolution that created the International Day of Conscience, and I quote, the International Day of Conscience constitutes a means of regularly mobilizing the efforts of the international community to promote peace, tolerance, inclusion, understanding and solidarity in order to build a sustainable world of peace, solidarity, and harmony. Let me thank the Kingdom of Bahrain for its championing of peace and understanding and for being such a vital custodian of this important day. The Kingdom of Bahrain has brought us together virtually. Uh, they were going to bring us together at UN headquarters. We are most grateful to the Kingdom. Thank you the organizers for bringing us together to commemorate the first ever International Day of Conscience. And I think this is very, very timely. I, I would like to also acknowledge the leadership of, of Bahrain, its Prime Minister, uh, the United Nations, uh, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, and its Director, Jeffrey Sachs. Before I start, His Royal Highness asked me first to convey personally as a special thanks and gratitude to many people who have helped turn this idea into reality. I'm honored to read this word and message. On this International Day of Conscience, we should inspire to recognize the importance of value of world conscience, to combat the threats to the world, future, and the achievement of our joint objective for a world of peace and honor. I would like to thank His Highness Prince Khalifa, the Prime Minister of Bahrain, for his vision and leadership in initiating this day. The COVID-19 pandemic is reminding us that although we have different languages, traditions Hello. and beliefs, we're one human race. We share the same DNA, but we also share the same hope for a life of peace, harmony, and health. I really commend the Kingdom of Bahrain uh, for the initiatives of this resolution, which is quite close to the heart of uh, UNESCO mandate building peace uh, in minds of uh, women and men through education, culture, and science, and strengthen uh, in, more than ever today uh, intellectual and moral solidarity. This year, through the collective wisdom of the world, the world's nations, the UN General Assembly, guided by the leadership of Bahrain, thank you, adopted Resolution 73329, promoting the culture of peace with love and conscience. 
And of course, we have to command the leadership of the king of uh, Bahrain in Hamad, and of course, uh, also, you know, the, His Highness uh, Prince Khalifa bin Salman and uh, the government of Bahrain for this, uh, this resolution. On this day of conscience, thanks to the initiative of the Kingdom of Bahrain, let's we all remember the importance of peace for the world community in such times of growing fear, rising tensions and nationalism. At the founding conference of the United Nations, and therefore in the chart of the United Nations, the whole question of conscience was brought to the table. Because as human beings, we must run our life on principles, on values. And conscience is a gift from God. Everybody has a conscience. I would like to congratulate the sponsors of this uh, event, the Kingdom of Bahrain, His Royal Highness Prince Harifa bin Salman al Khalifa, and all the participants, the people who have been working on this project. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, chaired a meeting at the Government Executive Committee held remotely. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince stressed that Bahrain's enduring priority remains the health and safety of all citizens and residents within the Kingdom. In this regard, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince stated that the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus COVID-19 is doubling its efforts to combat COVID-19, which continue in tandem with an integrated positive approach across the Kingdom's government under the leadership of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness highlighted the strength of the Kingdom's telecommunications infrastructure, the development of which has allowed for seamless communication and efficiency across all governorates to be maintained. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince concluded by reminding all within the Kingdom of the shared responsibility to contribute towards national efforts to combat the spread of COVID-19. Following the consideration of a report submitted by the National Medical Task Force to combat the coronavirus, headed by the Chairman of the Supreme Council for Health, Lieutenant General Dr Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the following decisions were taken, effective from 1900 hours Thursday the 9th of April to Thursday the 23rd of April. Movie theatres are to remain closed. All commercial sports gymnasiums, fitness studios, swimming pools and recreational activities are to remain closed. The activities of all restaurants, tourist facilities and places for serving food and beverages are to remain limited to external orders and delivery services. Shisha cafes are to remain closed. Services offered by these cafes are to remain limited to takeout and delivery of food and beverages only. Salons are to remain closed. All non-essential medical services provided by private healthcare clinics are to remain suspended. The first hour of grocery store shopping is to remain allocated for elderly and pregnant women. Public gatherings to remain limited to five individuals or fewer. Individuals are encouraged to stay at home as much as possible only going out for necessities. All citizens and residents are required to wear face masks whilst in public. Commercial and industrial businesses providing goods or services directly to customers are to open and resume work, provided the following conditions are met. Employees and visitors are required to wear a face mask. The number of employees in any facility is reduced and overcrowding in stores is actively prevented to ensure sufficient social distancing measures are maintained at all times. Stores must ensure continuous sterilisation, including external premises, in accordance with the guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health. Queuing lineups outside stores must be arranged in accordance to the social distancing measures issued by the Ministry of Health. Private sector enterprises are encouraged to follow the below guidelines. Remote working to maintain, if and when possible. The number of employees to be limited at any certain location, office and employees are instructed to adhere to social distancing measures. Employees using corporate transportation methods, such as buses, to be reduced. The Government's Executive Committee concluded by reiterating the importance of all to follow the guidelines issued aimed at combating the spread of COVID-19 as the United Team Bahrain. His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, a National Security Advisor and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, the SCYS, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a report from the SCYS member and Head of Coordination, Implementation and Follow-up Committee, His Highness Sheikh Faisal bin Rashid Al Khalifa, which included the committee's agreement and the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs with Bahrain Development Bank to postpone the instalments of national club loans for six months without additional fees or interest in support of national clubs and in line with the unification of national efforts to confront the repercussions of coronavirus. 
His Highness Sheikh Nasa had directed the committee to communicate with the concerned authorities and Bahrain Development Bank, which stemmed from His Highness's belief in the importance of supporting national clubs. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Faisal expressed appreciation of the efforts exerted by His Highness Sheikh Nasser in support of the youth and sports sector. He praised the support of His Highness Sheikh Nasser and his prominent role in presenting and following up the initiative to end sports dues and achieving justice between all sports parties, expressing aspiration that national clubs will implement the directives of His Highness in developing a financial strategy that prevents the accumulation of financial benefits for athletes. For his part, the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs, Ayman al Mouayed, expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness Sheikh Nasser for his directives, which affirms his support to national clubs, and noted the role of His Highness Sheikh Faisal and his interest in the efforts of the Ministry to end the financial due file for athletes. His Majesty the King's Representative for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and National Security Advisor and President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a telephone call from the British Senior Defence Advisor to the Middle East, Lieutenant General Sir John Lorimer. Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser reviewed with Sir Lorimer the historic bilateral relations of friendship and cooperation tying Bahrain and the United Kingdom and ways of bolstering them. They also stress the importance of maintaining international efforts in combating the coronavirus COVID-19. From his side, Sir Lorimer lauded Bahrain's efforts in battling the virus and the country's contribution towards the combined international efforts against the pandemic. Meanwhile, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser praised the deep-rooted distinguished ties binding both countries, wishing the UK and its people more success and further prosperity. The Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, participated in the emergency meeting that GCC countries held remotely, chaired by the UAE Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Interior and President of the current term, Lieutenant General Sheikh Saif bin Zayed Al Nayam, with the participation of the GCC Secretary General, Dr. Nayef Fala Mubarak Al Hajraf, to discuss the latest developments of the coronavirus crisis in GCC countries and the security procedures taken to curb the spread of COVID 19. The Minister of Interior expressed thanks and appreciation for the UAE for organising the meeting and holding it in light of the current exceptional circumstances in the world. He congratulated the new GCC Secretary General on his position, wishing him success in performing his task in the coming period. Sheikh Rashid reviewed the Kingdom's efforts and protocol in combating the coronavirus, healing the directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow up of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, which contribute to bolstering precautionary measures as part of the national efforts to mitigate the spread of the virus. The Minister affirmed the importance of exchanging experiences between GCC countries, expressing appreciation for the recommendations of Saudi Arabia on combating the virus. At the end of the meeting, the Interior Ministers expressed thanks and gratitude for the initiative of the UAE Minister of Interior to hold the meeting. The Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil Hamidan, announced the launch of a service on the website of the social insurance organisation, the SIO, that allows business owners to register and benefit from the government's initiative to pay the salaries of Bahraini citizens working in the private sector. This initiative came upon the Royal Directive to launch a stimulus package to support citizens and the private sector through the payment of the salaries of Bahraini citizens working in the private sector who are registered with the SIO in the months of April, May and June of the year 2020. The Labour Minister affirmed that the initiative reflects the keenness of His Majesty the King and the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to provide liquidity for the private sector to mitigate the social and economic repercussions of the novel coronavirus through supporting and maintaining the growth of the private sector, which is a cornerstone of the national economy. Humidan stated that the salaries will be paid through the savings from the Unemployment Insurance Fund at the cost of 215 million Bahraini dinars at a monthly rate in excess of 70 million dinars. The initiative will benefit nearly 100,000 registered employees and workers. Upon the directives and decisions of the Coordination Committee, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, obliging all citizens and residents to wear face masks in public places and to allow the resumption of the work of commercial and industrial shops that provide goods or services directly to customers, provided the following requirements are followed, including wearing face masks by workers and visitors to these commercial stores, reducing the number of people present in the facility and preventing overcrowding in the stores while leaving sufficient distance. 
The decision will be applied starting from tomorrow, Thursday, April the 9th, at exactly 7 o'clock in the evening. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism has announced the provision of more than a million medical masks in the markets and pharmacies starting from Wednesday to contribute to the application of the precautionary measures taken by the Kingdom to address the novel coronavirus, COVID-19. A survey conducted by Bahrain's Centre for Strategic International and Energy Studies at Dirasat affirmed that the Royal Directors of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa had a great impact in reassuring the Bahraini community in combating the emergent crisis of the coronavirus. The survey showed support for the precautionary measures and preventative measures taken by Bahrain to combat the coronavirus and the efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to preserve the health and safety of all. The Centre's Chairman of Board of Trustees, Dr Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, said that the wise leadership of His Majesty the King led Bahrain to safety amid an unprecedented global crisis and pioneering national efforts to combat the outbreak of the virus. He noted that the survey comes within the Centre's response to the national efforts to contain the repercussions of the virus. The High Committee for Combating the Coronavirus Outbreak in Oman said in a tweet today that the country will ban movement into and out of the Governorate of Muscat from April the 10th until April the 22nd. Oman has registered 419 cases of the novel coronavirus, including 48 in the last 24 hours. Egyptian Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli said today that a nationwide nighttime curfew will extend by 15 days until April the 23rd to counter the coronavirus spread. In a televised news conference, Al-Mabuli said airports will also stay closed, adding that the curfew would now start one hour later at 8pm local time each evening. Lebanon began the first round of COVID-19 tests for Palestinian refugees, while Jordan looks to mobilise efforts to financially support the United Nations Palestinian Refugee Agency, the UNRWA, amid the coronavirus outbreak. Lebanon began coronavirus examination trials at Ham Shafri Hospital in the southern city of Sidon. Meanwhile, Jordan's Foreign Minister Ayman Safadi spoke with the Secretary General of the Palestinian Liberation Organisations, the PLO Executive Committee, Saeb Erekat, about cooperation between Jordan and Palestine in the facing the pandemic. Safadi and Erekat also covered efforts to mobilise financial support for the UNRWA to enable it to continue offering vital services to refugees under the difficult circumstances that have placed additional burdens on the UN agency, which is already facing a financial crisis, according to a ministry statement. And now here's Yasmin with the latest business news. Thank you, Keith. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Yasmin Ibrahim. Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,303.25 points, marking a decrease of 10.9 points below the previous closing. This decrease was due to the fall in the commercial bank sector, investment sector, insurance sector, and industrial sector. 71 equity transactions took place with a volume of 4,431,899, worth 547,960 Bahraini dinars. Investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 44.15% of the total value of securities traded. The Trump administration is seeking an additional 250 billion US dollars to support a program designed to help small businesses and keep them from laying off workers in the midst of the coronavirus outbreak. President Donald Trump said that the government has already processed over $70 billion in guaranteed loans for 250,000 businesses since last Friday. The request would provide more funds for a $349 billion small business loan program that was created as part of the $2.2 trillion rescue program, which the Congress passed last month. Eurozone finance ministers discussed a three-pillar aid package to provide concrete financial measures to tackle the coronavirus crisis. During a video conference chaired by the Eurogroup president, ministers discussed a range of measures that includes up to 240 billion euros in loans from the Eurozone's bailout fund. The package also provides short-term credit to keep companies afloat and a scheme to help companies avoid firing people. 
Cambodia's leader said that he is ordering a ban on exports of rice and fish to ensure there are no local shortages of the staple foods during the coronavirus crisis. The prime minister said that he wanted to make sure there was, there was a sufficient supply of salt and noodles as well. He appealed to Cambodians to plant vegetables and other crops to supply local markets during this difficult time. Expensive varieties of rice that Cambodia has contracts to sell abroad, abroad are exempted from the export ban. The Italian Prime Minister has announced a 400 billion euros package of additional economic aid for small, medium and large Italian companies struggling in the wake of the new coronavirus. The aid will be administered as loans through banks and is aimed at boosting both domestic economy and exports. Italian businesses are facing a major crisis due to the shutdown of all non-essential factories and enterprises to limit the spread of the virus. He also stressed that the European stability mechanism is unfit to support the Italian economy and only European bonds can be can be used as a right tool to cope with the ongoing emergency. And finally before we conclude our business news for this evening let's take a look at how stock markets around the world fared in daily trading. And that is it from the business desk. It's back to you, Keith. Thank you, Yasmin. Hospitals in Thailand have a new robot that is helping to fight the spread of the coronavirus. With battery-powered motors in the bottom and voice-activated computers on the top, simple hospital food carts are now turned into robotic soldiers on the front line of the fight against COVID-19. Engineers from startup companies teamed up with Thailand's prestigious Chulalongkorn University to come up with tools that could deliver food and medicine to patients and allow remote communication between them and with medical staff. The Pinto robot helps doctors keep a safe distance from the infectious patients, while hospitals are currently facing a shortage of masks and protective suits. Through donations and public funding, the team hopes to make up to 100 robots to distribute between hospitals nationwide by the end of the month.